gold. This is the deciding shot of the tournament, ladies and gentlemen. Truman Davis, now champion, has just sunk his last putt on the last green to turn in the amazing score of 68. Jan Mason, the contender, is on a green with a 66, which in itself is even more amazing. Mason's ball lies at the very edge of the green. Looks like tough going. Should he sink the ball in one more stroke, turn in a 67 as compared with a 68 by Davis, we'll have a brand new champion. Should Jan Mason require two strokes, he would tie up the match, and three strokes would defeat him. And now Mason has just stepped into position. He's bending over the ball. He eyes the center of the green with that masterly, dead-eye precision of his. Changes his footing slightly. There's not a sound from the spectators. Every breath is held in excitement. This great contender prepares for victory or defeat. He pulls back the putter slightly. Eyes the distance of the hole once more. Takes deadly aim. Hits the ball and... It's in. He made it. The ball's in for the win for Jan Mason, and the crowd goes wild. It's a new champion, ladies and gentlemen, Jan Mason, the boy who came up the hard way to defeat the one and only Truman Davis for five consecutive years, the master of it all. And here's the irony. Almost 11 years ago, when Jan Mason first thought of golf, he acted as caddy for Truman Davis, the man he defeated for the championship here today. Oh, the crowd has completely engulfed the two participants. And it's a little difficult for us to see them now. Oh, there they are, shaking hands and smiling. We're trying to make our way over to them for a few words from both Mason and Davis. Oh, will you pardon me, please? Uh, pardon me, ladies. We're trying to get through. I beg your pardon, please. We'd like to get a few words from the two gentlemen. Uh, we're trying our best, ladies and gentlemen, to make our way through this excited throng. But, ah, there's the gold cup. The gold cup for the tournament winner. It's just been handed to one of the official referees by a beautiful platinum-haired girl. The referee is about to make the presentation. No, no, something's wrong. The referee turns to his fellow judges. They're talking excitedly. We can't make out yet what's happening. The men are examining the gold cup. Oh, it's flashing in the sunlight. Really a beautiful thing. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's that? Something's happened. It's John Mason. He's been shot. Someone shot the new champion. He's holding his left side. He's strangling. He's grabbed the gold cup. He's fallen out. John Mason is lying on the right of the ring. He's on the left side. Hello. I ask you not to disturb me, clerk. I don't care if there is someone to see me. What? Who? Lee Sanders, the radio announcer? Well, tell him I'm not in. I don't care if he is standing there watching you talk to him. Tell him you're talking to the maid. What? Hello. Who's speaking? But I was talking to the room clerk. Now, look here, Mr. Saunders. What do you want with me? No, I'm sorry. I don't have time to see you. No, I have nothing to discuss with you. Goodbye. Oh, he said he wanted to talk to me about the murder. He saw me. He, he, he's suspicious. He, he knows something. I, I must get out of here. I'll, I'll hurry and pack my things. I, oh, no. No time to pack. I just put on my coat, purse, my purse, my hat. I'll, I'll, I'll carry the hat. All right. Oh, no. Not the front way. The back. I... Going somewhere, miss? Oh. Who are you? I'm the fellow you hung up on. What do you want? I figured you'd try to run out the back way. I don't know you. Let me by. Oh, no. Back inside. We're going to talk. There's nothing I have to discuss with you. I'm afraid there is. A little matter of murder. How much do you know? Plenty. Come on, inside. But I... Inside. Now. I have nothing to say to you. You think not? Not a thing in the world. I demand that you leave here at once before I call the police. Oh, that way, is it? Very well. Here you are. What do you mean? Take the receiver. Shall I dial the number? What number? The police, of course. Hang up that phone. <laughs> so... You're not as willing to call the police here as you pretend. How did you find me? Well, I was lucky. What do you mean? You ran a stop sign downtown just after you'd come from the golf links. It was my car you almost hit. Oh. 
No one saw you leave the golf links. No one knew who you were. You weren't the girl who was officially in charge of the gold prize cup. No. And what's more, the cup that was given to the chief referee wasn't the official prize cup. No. Instead, it was some some fantastic thing. A cup of pure gold, but covered with some sort of ancient writing. Well? Yes. Now, look here. I'm a radio reporter, and I've got a story here. I want to know what it is. I don't know the explanation myself. Bottle it up and save it, sister. You murdered Jan Mason. Did I? Didn't you? No one saw who shot him. Well, that's true. It's the general opinion that you did it. The... the general opinion? Naturally. You weren't the girl in charge of the prize cup. The real girl and the real cup have disappeared. And you were standing in a position where you could have fired the shot. Are you sure of that? I'm positive. I remember. I saw you. Did, did I really shoot him? What? Tell me, did I really shoot him? I don't know. All I know is that you were standing directly in front of Mason. And that so were six or eight others. I don't know. I don't know. Look here. Maybe you and I can make a deal. A deal? Tell me your story. Tell me what happened. Maybe I can help you. I... I don't know what happened. What do you mean you don't know? All I know is there was a big crowd and a golden cup. A little round white ball. A loud noise. Go on. That's all I remember. The next thing I knew, I was I was here in my apartment, stretched out on my bed with a gun in my hand. Where is it? In that drawer over there. Yeah, this one over here? Yes. Yeah. yeah it's been fired, a thirty-two. Mason was killed with a thirty-two. He, he's dead. If he isn't, sister, he's a great little pretender. It wasn't my fault. I tell you, it wasn't my oh, fault. Oh, maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't. Now, take it easy and tell me what happened. Why should I tell you? Because you've got to tell somebody. But who are you? My name's Lee Saunders. The clerk told you that on the phone. I'm a radio reporter, sports and news. Now it's your turn. What? Who are you? Oh, it doesn't matter. Well, let me decide that. What's your name? Ruth Kendish. What do you have against Jan Mason? I didn't know him. You make a habit of killing men you don't know? I didn't even know him, I tell you. I, I didn't know him. Oh, let me alone. Now, stop that. No. Oh, stop it, I say. Do you want to tell me what happened, or do you want to tell me and the police? They're looking for me, aren't they? The police. What do you think? Listen... I've told you what happened. I, I don't remember a thing except a big crowd. A cup of gold, a little white ball, and, and a loud noise like a shot. Yeah. And then you woke up here in your room with a gun in your hand. A gun that killed Jan Mason just a few moments after he'd won the golf championship. It can't be true. It just can't be true. You're in trouble, baby. You better let me try to help you. What can you do? I don't know till I've heard your story. It must have been the incense. Incense? Now, what are you talking about? It came this morning in the mail. A little package with three little cones. It was... It was addressed to me. There was a note inside. It's there in the drawer. Where the gun was? Yes. Is this the paper it was wrapped in? Yes. Is this the incense? Yes. Well, I thought you said your name is Ruth Kendish. It is. Well, this was addressed to Rotha Kendish. What? Sure. Look for yourself. There, you see? Yes. Did you find the note? What note? Oh, there it is. You, you dropped it on the floor. Oh, this? Yes. Read it. Rotha. You will put a fire to one of these precisely at one this afternoon. Yes. It was the incense. What? I tried to forget it, put it away, and tried to keep it off my mind, but exactly at one, I, I opened the little metal box and lighted one of the cones. There was a lot of smoke, sweet, scented, thick. And that's all I remember. Good Lord. What are you doing? Is there any more of the stuff left? No, two more little cones. Here, let's see. 
Yes, there are two left. Here, give me a match. What? A match. Get me a match. Oh, oh no. Oh, here. Here's one. Oh, don't. Please don't. I'm going to see what this nonsense is all about. Oh, no. Oh, please, you don't know what you're doing. Now, we'll see in a minute. There. Oh, I beg you not to do that. So much smoke. So quickly. I don't understand how a little thing like that can produce so much smoke. That odor. The same. The very same. It's so strange. Oh. The smoke. Look how it rolls in great clouds, hiding everything. Stop it. Stop it. So, so much smoke, hiding everything. I can hardly see you. Oh, it's like we were in another world. You are in another world. What? What's that? Welcome, Rotha and Letha. Who are you? Where are you? I am here beside you. You see? Yes. And now I do. The smoke's clearing away. What happened? What happened? Don't you recognize me, Rotha? My name's Ruth. I've never seen you before. Ah, that is where you are wrong. You have seen me before. No. No, I don't know you. You mean you don't recognize me? Who are you? My name is Malta. Malta? Yes, Rotha. I am the Holy One. I don't understand. What's happened to us? We were in this young lady's apartment. Now we're someplace I've never seen before. Where are we? You are on Bento. Bento? What's Bento? Bento is an offspring of Venus and Pluto. What? It is a planet as yet undiscovered by the scientists of the Earth. Many hundreds of thousands of years ago, Venus and Pluto collided... That probably would sound absurd to your astrologers today, but it is a fact. As a result of the collision, Bento came into being. A portion of Venus and a part of Pluto fused, broke off, and became Bento. Uh, you're talking over my head. Naturally, the people who existed on Pluto and those of Venus intermingled with Bento became a planet in its own right. As a, a result of that ancient catastrophe, the Ventonians came into existence. I am one of them. And the two of you are now here amongst us. But how? How did we get here? You remember the incense? Oh, yes. The incense? It is one of Vento's secrets. A tiny cone that emits a vapor powerful enough to permit anyone in contact with it to do as we here on Vento bid him to do. It still got me goofy. After I started the incense burning, everything changed. We ended up here. Naturally. Because when you came in contact with the released vapors, I bade both of you to come here. And here you are. Oh, now, what do you take us for? This is the 20th century. Folks like us aren't taken in by some crack. Just of... one moment. Here. Will you look through this? Through what? This telescope. Here. Right through here. Oh, now. It will not hurt you to look, will it? If you insist. That's right. In there. Now. What do you see? A large round globe. It is the Earth. Ten million miles from here. Preposterous. You think so? Here. I'll turn on the ultra-penetrating ray machine and show you how preposterous it is. Now, what do you see? Closer. It's coming closer. Yes, yeah, something's happening. The ultra-penetrating ray is making ten million miles of distance look like only inches. It is the Earth. There's Europe. Great Britain. China and Australia. Now I can see the California coast. And Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Illinois, Florida, Pennsylvania, New York. Suppose we concentrate upon Florida. There. No. It's not possible. What do you see, Mr. Saunders? A funeral. The funeral of Jan Mason, the golfer. Oh, no. Suppose you permit Rotha to look, Mr. Saunders. Yes, all right. Go right ahead, Rotha. 
That's right. There. You still do not remember, Rafa? Why do you call me Rafa? Because that is your name. My name is Ruth. When you were here, you were called Rafa. When... When I was here? Many centuries ago, Rafa. You were originally a Ventonian. What are you talking about? We have theories of reincarnation as you do on your earth. Yes, I... I've heard about it vaguely, but... The one failing is that your theories do not go far enough. What do you mean? That there is such a thing as reincarnation, Mr. Saunders. But it is not restricted to one single planet, such as the Earth. You surely aren't trying to tell us that Miss Kendish here is the reincarnation of someone who lived up here. Whether or not you accept it, it remains a fact. Oh, that's utterly ridiculous. I'm glad I had the foresight to think of your reluctance to believe. So I have prepared the truth. Prepared what? What are you talking about? What's the explanation Must of all Must I this? explain it again? The vapor of the incense I sent you. Once it surrounds you, you are at the mercy of the Ventonian who sent it. You on your planet would call it black magic. But it is merely nothing more than applied science. What's this, this proof you were talking about? I will extinguish the lights and show you. Here on Vento, all time, all incidents are recorded. I shan't attempt to explain them completely. Suffice it to say, the principle is somewhat similar to that of your talking pictures. Only on a much more advanced and widespread scale. Anything that has ever happened here on Vento since the invention of this recorder can be reviewed by those who wish to see it. That's why there is no crime, no evil here. Now, I turn on the machine. I must ask you to be silent. Do not speak. Mr. Saunders, look. Quiet. That's me. Quiet, I say. It is you, but not in your present body. It is you of centuries ago. Watch closely now and listen. Come in. Darling. Kent, the dearest. Forgive me for coming to you so late, but I had to see you before tomorrow. Oh, I'm glad you're here, dearest. I've waited for you all day. I've been in practice. Are you ready for the game tomorrow? Yes, quite. I fear I'll have trouble defeating Yana, though. He's become quite expert. Oh, do you care so much? Rafa, if I should lose tomorrow... Oh, but we mustn't think of such a thing. Victory means everything to both of us. so hard. But now it's too late. Unless there's a miracle. If Yana misses two strokes... Oh, but he can't. And even if he did, it would be a draw. If he takes but one stroke, my poor Kanta will be defeated. Yana is ready now. If he does it in a single stroke, Kanta has lost. Now... <gasps> he did it. Yana did it. My poor, poor Kenta. Kenta. My dearest one. I come to you, but without the cup of gold. No, oh, does it matter so much? Yes, yes, much. Promised that you should have the cup. But I don't mind. I should have won. We still have each other, Kenta. We will be married. No. No, Rafa. For yesterday, I swore by the great god Venda that should I not be victorious, I wouldn't be worthy of you. You swore by Venda? Yes, yes. A sacred oath. I was so eager for victory. I knew that the very thought of losing you forever would inspire me to win. But I failed. An oath? 
oath sworn to Brenda is a holy oath. I must resign myself to it. But now, now I swear by the great God of Venda, a holy and a sacred oath, that I will avenge what has happened. I will take vengeance from Yana if all eternity is required for me to do it. I believe that is all the proof you need. Ruth, did you know Truman Davis? Truman Davis. Truman Davis, the national golf champion. The one who was beaten by Jan Mason. No. No, I didn't know either of them. You think not, Rotha? Don't you recognize the man called Jan Mason? He is the reincarnation of the man Yana, who defeated Kenta in the games many years ago. It all seems so familiar, and yet I... I'm so upset. You swore a terrible oath centuries ago. An oath to work vengeance upon Yana. In your span of life here on Vento, you did not find the opportunity to avenge yourself. And so, as one of the high priests of Vento, it was my duty to bring to a climax your ancient oath. You sent that devilish incense to her. You prompted her to go out there and kill Jan Mason. Gave her that golden cup. It is the cup Kenta lost to Yana centuries ago. It amazes and confuses the earth people greatly. You're responsible for all that happened. Hypnotize this girl. Now what? Now she'll return to the earth and accept her punishment. Oh, no. No, that's not right. It is not for you to say. It's for me to say. Take this. Quick. There's no time to lose. There's no escape from here. The incense. I still have it here. There's one cone left. Just one. But what can you do? Have you heard what he said? Anyone here on this planet can use it. Oh, confound it. Haven't I got a match? Yeah, here's one. Now... Please. Careful. That's my last match. There. It's burning. Now turn on that ray machine. Can do what? Turn it on. Turn it on. Oh, all right. What are you going to do? Look into the telescope. Watch. Tell me what happens. All right. I'm holding the burning incense in front of the telescope lens. Oh, I'm hoping. Lee, it's still focused on the funeral. But something's happened. Yes? The coffin is gone. It's opened. Someone's sitting up in it. Is it Jan Mason? Yes. Yes, it is. Good. Just a mere thought did it. The penetrating ray sent the incense vapor directly to earth, to the man in the casket, Mason. And I concentrated on his coming to life again. He is. He is alive. Oh, Lee. Oh, our friend's coming, too. What do we do? Here, give me your hand. What? Give me your hand. Come on, hurry, hurry. Lee, that smoke... Hurry, there's no time to lose. How are we going to get away from here? Simple. You saw what a mere thought did for Jan Mason. Hold tight now. Here we go. The Cup of Gold, tonight's original tale of dark fantasy by Scott Bishop. Ben Morris was Lee Saunders, Eleanor Naylor Corrin played Ruth, Muir Height was the High Priest, and George Andre was Kenta. Next Friday, the 26th in this dark fantasy series created by Scott Bishop, Coffins for Two, the weird and pulse-pounding tale of two boxes roughly hewed into the shape of caskets bearing three silver handles on each side and silver name plates, on which were engraved the names of two living people. This is Tom Paxton speaking. Dark Fantasy comes to you each Friday night from Oklahoma City. This is the National Broadcasting Company.